Hey, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. My name is Jimmy Lee. I am with the Institute. Super excited to have you here with us this morning. They are flooding in. Everyone is flooding in. Super excited to have you with us this morning. Super excited for this to be an interactive conversation. This is to be interactive. And in fact, to uh, to start things off, want to make sure that you know how to ask questions, give comments, concerns. I'll be the voice for you with our two guests that we have in this webinar today. I want you to type into your questions box where it is you're joining us from today. So go ahead and type into that questions box where you're joining us from today so that I can see where you're joining from. It's that Q&A. We got Matt Rich from Mississippi. Hello from Lucas, Texas. Good to see you, Mr. Craig Zale. Glad you are here, brother. Uh, Janice Jack, Portland, Oregon. Betty from Ocala, Florida. Betty, so super excited to have you here today. Super excited to have uh, and to welcome Betty as uh, the newest, most recent member of the Institute family. Thank you, Betty. Kat Davis from Oklahoma, Timothy in Draper, Utah. Tim Cannon, what's up? How are you, brother? Good to uh, good to have you here, Tim. Uh, for those who don't know, Tim is with AutoNet TV. He's also a Sigma Chi, and I'm a Sigma Chi. Uh, Samantha Daly from Des Moines, Iowa. Samantha, glad to have you here. Thank you very much. Chris from Indiana. Chris Christensen. Awesome name there, Chris Christensen. My uh, my middle name is Christian. Close to your last name, but not exactly the same. All right, Allie Smith, Fort Worth. Super excited. Oh, so excited that you guys are here. Thank you so much. We are going to have a tremendous time today. We're going to have so much fun talking to my two guests because this is this goes into some areas that are big concern. Big concern for me, big concern for you. And it goes into identifying those customers, identifying those perfect customers for your shop. Not only identifying those customers, because we can all create that avatar. It's knowing exactly when they are ready to buy. And we're going to have some great conversations right around that sort of a topic, which is going to be awesome and amazing. Uh, because wouldn't you love to be the first call when your customers reach out or want to buy or need service that they think of you and they call you first? Well, even better than that, how about if you knew before they knew? We're going to get into a little bit of that kind of stuff. No crystal balls involved here. This is all science and technology. So I'm going to share my screen because we're, we're ready to rock and roll and kick things off. Shazam. Is it working? <laughs> Is it working? My name is Jimmy Lee. I am with the Institute. Super excited that you are able to spend a few minutes to, with us together today as we talk about these things going forward in our shops, in our business. My name is Jimmy Lee. I am the host. I'll be the voice for you today. Joining is Dan Vance. Mr. Dan Vance is the founder and CEO of Advance Local. Dan is a, a super awesome guy. I loves to spend time on his back porch cooking steaks, sitting around a campfire, and just uh, spreading stories, true or not. Sounds like the plan. It sounds like a really good plan, one yeah. that I hope to participate in here fairly soon before exactly. it gets too cold. Get a real invite. Well, I'm, I'm jazzed to be here. It's awesome. Oh, good, good. I'm glad you're here. Joining us as well is Mr. Justin Ray, founder and CEO of Cinch. When Justin isn't saving the world one shop at a time, he enjoys spending time eating, exercising, and taking long walks on the beach with his family. Justin. I, I got to find out who uh, who wrote that for me. <laughs> glad <laughs> that to be was here. me, dude. You killed my roast. <laughs> Perfect. Like, it is the beach. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which beach is your favorite? <laughs> well, uh, I, I prefer uh, Ormond Beach in Florida, not far from home, but uh, uh, there's a whole lot of beautiful other ones out there, too. Yes, yes, there are a lot of beautiful beaches. I like the beaches that have sand and water. Hey, those are good ones because yeah. there's a lot that have just rocks and water. <laughs> truth, truth. So super excited to get into this uh, conversation with you gentlemen here today. I'm going to uh, stop this screen share and uh, 
let, let's dive into some of these things that we've been talking about because this is on the minds of everybody. How do we identify our perfect client? How do we know when they need us? How do we stay top of mind for them? But then also let's flip that, Justin. How do we know when they want to buy from us? What's what's the process procedure? What are you doing there? Yeah, I, I think one of the best ways to know when they want to buy from us is, is know who is going to buy from you. Let's start off with identifying really your, your best customers. Okay. And the easiest way to do that is have a good good CRM, have all of your data be pulling in, tracking um, tracking not just the transaction information, but tracking your emails and phone numbers on who those people are so you can uniquely identify who your customers are. And that, uh, that really gets the ball rolling. And typically in the marketing world, we call that the um, ideal customer profile or ICP. And, um, and the ICP is what should help drive a lot of your marketing decisions as you, you try to acquire new customers and, um, and how much you should be spending on your current customers for marketing. Okay. So identifying the best customer. And, and I think that there's a few different ways of identifying a best customer. Uh, do you have ways that you identify that within your, your process, your program, or is it just on the amount of money they spend with us or the consistency of attending and showing up for the, for their services? What, yeah. What is that qualifier? Yeah, it definitely depends on where you're at in your, your marketing journey um, as a company yourself. But if you're if you're just getting started, that's the easiest way to do it. Is just to use the the data you have on how often are they coming in for transactions, how much are they spending, um, what type of services are they getting done, the data that you already have. Mm -hmm. um, once you're able to start using that to understand who, um, what kind of the makeup or breakup uh, breakdown of your customer base there is, you can actually then start to enrich that data, which is gets really fun and exciting. But you can connect your customer data to other data sources so you can bring in additional information about them and get things like age, income, educational role, home ownership, how many vehicles they have, how many kids, what, you know, do they, do they shop at Walmart or, or Target? You get it's really granular and, and somewhat a little creepy on that. But, um, but you get to use that data then to create better um, segments of your customers to understand more holistically what your ideal customer profile looks like. And you typically don't have to have, it's not like, hey, we've got this one ideal customer profile, right? Um, you'll typically have a couple of those, um, but you, you won't really go beyond five of those. Five is, is a lot. Um, and really starting to identify, okay, we have a female between the ages of you know, 35 and 55 who makes between this much as a household income, they own their home and you start to have that kind of information. And, uh, and, and when you are able to tie that back to the information that you have on um, how much people are spending, how often they're coming in, um, creates a really great opportunity for you to really be able to understand, hey, this ideal customer profile is spending this much and coming in this frequently. And so now you could go start working with somebody like, uh, like Dan and be able to say, hey, we need to find more customers like this. And, and that's where his, his team has a lot of capacity and ability to help, um, help do that. Okay, time out before we go to Dan. I have questions for you. Yeah. And, and by the way, audience, you're listening. You've got questions. Chat them in. Put them into the questions and answer box, and, and I'll be happy to answer those questions with you. So um, you talked about five criteria. Are we talking five criteria for the ideal customer or are we talking about five different ideal customers and their profile? Correct. So do yep. we have five or do we only have one? So you'll typically, you want to start with one and understand really kind of a, a more general, but when you start to get more detailed on that and you're saying, now we're going to be looking at you know, certain age brackets, you're going to okay. potentially talk to those different ideal customers in a little different way, right? Oh, and so your marketing nice. campaigns to them can be different. So I typically recommend don't have, um, you know, aim for around three, but don't have more than three, right? But if you, if you have a very broad customer base, you might go up to having five different ideal customer profiles. So, um, you know, you might have the, like we said, the example we said, you've got this woman 35 to 55 over here, You've got, uh, maybe you have high school kids and you're trying to market to their parents. So households would have a 16 to 18 year old in them, right? And that might be another ideal profile. And then you might have um, men from 
you know, 18 to 65, right? And, and start to identify kind of those in different areas. Okay. Um, by having those different ideal customer profiles gives you the ability to communicate with them a little differently than you would the rest, instead of just doing a very generic, hey, we're going to market, you know, blanket market out here, right? If you can have a marketing campaign that's catered to your ideal customer profile based on, you know, the other things that they might like or things that are going to catch their attention, that really helps you have a lot better results in your, your marketing processes. Okay, so we're identifying now five perfect customers. Um, and within that identification, how many criteria is a good number of criteria? And then how much is too much? You know, um, too much is when you as an individual can't necessarily remember or start to label those out. That's way, the way I think about that. As we move into the future, too much might not actually be a thing with artificial intelligence in this capacity. But uh, for where we are today, you know, I typically, you're going to want to have maybe 15 upwards of, of 20 data points that you're going to say, hey, these are the data points on those. The, the truth is, is really trying, and, and if you become pretty savvy with this, you're trying to really identify what are the most unique things about this customer profile that sets them apart from others and why they maybe spend more, come in more often, or are, are all around more valuable to you as a shop and as a business owner. And if you're able to identify those things, that's, that's really the differentiating things that you want to be able to, to pinpoint and pull out. Does that answer that? Oh, yeah. Now, now, Dan, we've identified our top five avatars, our top five perfect clients. How do we adjust ourselves or position ourselves digitally to make sure that that new customer is attracted to us? It's a great question. And it kind of reinforces like this little example I'm gonna give you reinforces what Ryan's been saying. And that is um, one of the great advertisers of all time. His name was Oklavi. And um, he did a lot of magazine content at the time. And this was in the 50s, uh, 60s. And um, he did a lot of work for Rolls Royce, and he did a he did a content page on Rolls Royce where he talked about how when you drove the vehicle, it was so quiet that you could hear the clock, which was the old round clock, and was in the, the dash old, like watch, yeah, in the dash, and um, he, and the article was all about how when you drive this vehicle and the luxury and the comfort, it's so pleasant to drive. You can hear the clock click as the seconds advance around. And that that marketing sold more Rolls Royces than uh, that that company had ever experienced before. And they sent Ogilvy, they shipped him from Britain, they shipped him uh, his own Rolls Royce as a thank you. Oh my so, word. Wow. I think that's a classic marketing example of how, you know, we build these profiles of kind of like what we think represents our preferred customer. We use data like Ryan's talking about, what's the data help us understand? But a lot of times it's just about really just like keying into those things that they love. You know, they love what it is about that BMW driver that he just loves about his car and messaging around that. And I think that's kind of like at the heart of really like a marketing and bringing in this real world of what do I do to create this, um, this draw, this magnet to my business of people that kind of match this profile that I built and I've used data to get there, but then I really want to key into messaging that's going to resonate and they're going to love it. So I think that's kind of a broad, but kind of like hopeful, helpful answer to like how the marketing works. It, it is. And, and uh, uh, Cole raised his hand. So Cole, go ahead and type your question into the chat box or into the question and answer. And we'd, I'd be happy to ask your question. So Cole, Cole has some questions here. I'm sure it'll okay. be coming here in a minute. Better be good. So to yeah. me, Brett, oh, you, you can't set that up like that. <laughs> what if be it, great. I know it will be. I want it. All questions are good questions. But yes. There's only stupid true. answers. Uh, that is very true. Okay. So I have a question then. So we identify the BMW driver. We identify the Ford F-150 truck driver. We identify the rolling living room, uh, the, the minivan. Are you saying then that we need to have on that 
that that becomes the landing page and we start marketing that page to those types of people? Is that what we're doing? Well, some of you will know this, others may not, um, but Google is already building preferences, um, kind of labeling your business with certain key attributes. And you can see that in reviews, they'll um, they'll have little buttons that'll say so many reviews are about price or so many reviews are about brands. And those attributes are uh, what Ryan's been talking about, which is data. They're collecting the data, people that are engaging with you and writing reviews and they're pulling content out of that review and they're mashing all that up. And they're saying people that go to this shop really like the shop because of price. Well, if you're that kind of shop, then you've got good alignment there. Uh, so from a marketing standpoint, that's where I take my data and I start seeing how I'm currently being kind of like propagated out into the internet via search engines and others through their own preference research. And I'm trying to realign that to what I really want to do. And that's, okay. So, that's so here's a scenario. Let me run this idea past you and see what you think here. Um, a, a shop year to date, they run a report out of their point of sale system. They pull yeah. out to, to discover which vehicle, which make and model are they making the most money off of? Um, yeah. I'm, and this is totally fake, fake numbers, but I'm, it, it illustrates a point. In this shop, they have serviced um, 24 Ford F-150s. And uh, this year, year to date, they've sold $42,000 worth of work on those Fords. Uh, and same same shop, same time period, year to date, they've worked on 15 Chevys and they've uh, performed $12,000 worth of business on, on the Chevy trucks. Okay, so we're not gonna get into which is a better truck or not. In this scenario, <laughs> What we've identified is that we're making more, we're selling more services to the Ford trucks. Is that a scenario where I want to set up a Ford truck landing page? So um, the answer oh, to that is- And, oh, more, more, hold on. Yeah, okay. Do I really want to focus in on those Ford truck drivers to get reviews from them? Okay, so to the first question first, landing page yeah. and then to reviews. Yeah. I, I really feel like I need to just help the listeners and participants understand that Google already knows things about that person that's doing a search. As an example, I have a Ford app on my phone. Google knows that I drive around a, a Ford truck. And so the likelihood is that so when I do a search for truck repair, um, I'm going to get search results from companies that have worked to optimize and to match their marketing with me because I've kind of, in a sense, been, I don't really want to use this word, but I've kind of been profiled through preferences and other searches I've done on my phone and my app. So as well, a that's company, just Google, just knowing Google that making Google the does for that, <clears throat> knowing that they do that, then I want to market as, as much as I can. So a landing page on my website that has reviews built into the page. Yeah, I brought my Ford truck here. They did this, they did that, they were great. But addition to that is publishing content, either through social media or in Google posts or blogs that really speak to your expertise and authority related to service on Ford trucks. And what you'll see is, is that Google will recognize that uh, from your business as a, as a marketing and as an adding to the internet community, and they will bring you more of those people because they already know people like me. They already know everything about me in a sense. So the data you collect from a CRM helps you understand who your customer is, but you have to understand Google CRM is everybody that does a search. Like they have all kinds of data on us and they're doing the same thing. So a good marketer is going to bring those two worlds into alignment. And that's what you're talking about, Jimmy, is to say, yeah, you want a landing page. You want to do posts. You want to have pictures. You want to have your customers taking pictures with you 
your service writer in front of your shop. Like you want to do all of these things to reinforce, yeah, we really are the place for Ford trucks or Chevy truck or trucks, just trucks. trucks. Yeah. So, so if we had a landing page that was just trucks, I could attract both Ford drivers, Chevys, Dodge. Yep. Okay. Well, we can. And you just, again, you just want to build content that resonates to a truck driver. You know, somebody driving a truck drives a truck because of certain reasons versus somebody that drives a car. Now, I'm a big guy. I don't like to sit on the floor to get into a vehicle. I like some of these smaller calls, cars because they're fast and they go through the traffic really well, but I like to drive in comfort. So that's a feature that, you know, if you marketed to me and you said, hey, we, we know you're driving a truck because of these reasons, that resonates. Like, okay, they get me, they're going to fix my vehicle, which I have chosen for reasons. Yeah. So, um, and, and let's uh, break it down to the simple pages. What is a landing page? Yes. Yeah, so on your website, you're going to have your homepage, which gets most of your visitors, has your highest authority scores. It's the most recognized by Google, but it's supported by blocks of content inside your website that, that tell a bigger story about things that you do. And those are landing pages. Now, if I'm running ads on my website, I might just run somebody right to that individual page. But I can run somebody to my homepage through marketing, through SEO, organic, Google Maps, and I can get them to land on my homepage and allow them to easily collect more data about the services that we provide and let them do that self-discovery because it's all there. And those are yeah. landing pages that reinforce that homepage. Yeah, how ultimately, structure, how it goes. That's how you build that. Yeah, those those ideas with landing pages are just to let uh, you have a campaign running and you want to keep some continuity between the campaign that you're running, like we were talking about with we're running ads on trucks and um, or a Chevy truck. We bring somebody to a page now that talks about Chevy truck services that we might have. And the great part about that is it creates continuity between the campaign and the web page for the, the customer or the prospect, but it also allows tracking of that. So then we can track how well that ad campaign ran to if somebody um, came to the site and then we can start to continue to track and track that customer's behavior from that spot on. Nice. Yeah. I, I like that. I, I like being able to track the information. I like tracking uh stuff that's happening um so we know what's working and what's not working that's that's really where we want to get to make sure we know what's working and what's not working so so to that retention uh tracking we're uh, marketing we've got acquisition going what about um retention versus acquisition which one is the most cost effective i hear a lot of shop owners saying oh my gosh i need more car count i need more car count what advice would you have for them? Yeah, I mean, I'll jump in there, but I think uh, everybody everybody definitely wants new new customers and new new revenue, and that's definitely something to be focused on. But it's a lot cheaper and more effective to um, focus on your current customers and what you can do to expand the the share of wallet or or the relationship that you have with those customers and. I mean, if you're definitely doing a great job already to optimize that and you have um, you have good relationships with those customers and they're coming in, you're using, you have preventative maintenance services, you have repair services, you have, you know, things that, that you can handle entirely as a shop, but you have, um, you have those all together, then, then you can start looking and focusing a lot more of your marketing dollars on your, your acquisition but it's always going to be cheaper to um, to grow your business and grow your bottom line to spend some money on your customer um, customer retention campaigns. Yeah, and I'd add to that too. Like, it's um, it's an interesting dynamic where um, you know I get calls on a regular basis, and a lot of times I'll get calls about, hey, you know, this is happening. We want better performance, and of course you do. Uh, like, I totally get that. But um, as a marketer, I sometimes wonder about, 
well, you're spending so much on Google ads or SEO and some of this other stuff. What are you doing towards your existing customer base? And if you're slow on your car counts right now, what what have you done with the guy that was in here two months ago or three months ago to kind of like re-energize them to, to work on maintenance, to get them to be that customer that really wants to meet, keep the car running well through maintenance rather than just only dragging it in when it breaks. And I think, I think the biggest case study that we've ever had related to this that reinforces this was called COVID. You know, when they shut the economy down, um, the auto repair industry, their numbers, everybody's numbers went through the roof. And the reason it did is because the first thing everybody in their shops did was they reached out to their existing customers. And they said, hey, this is actually a great time to bring your vehicle in. And they came in and by droves. I know there's shops out there that made millions from existing customers. So I think it's a two-way thing, right? You definitely want new acquisition. You want new customers. you got to keep your messaging out there and your branding. But you've got to work really as hard on your marketing through your existing customers. And great CRM, I think, is the channel to doing that. That's where you start. Yeah, yeah, you definitely, you, you've got to have that CRM working and, and hitting for sure. I talk to a lot of shops across the country and, and they'll have anywhere from you know, 1500 uh, current customers. And, and I define a current customer as somebody that's come in this year yeah. to their shop. They'll have anywhere from 1500 to 6,000, depends on the size of the shop and the, their operation. And they'll have a database of 6,000 people up to upwards of uh, 15, 18, 20,000. Yeah. So with having that type of numbers inside of your current POS system, a CRM plugin, plug and play helps you to identify, helps you to market, helps you to retain that customer and keep them coming back. So yeah, I absolutely love that. And I need to give a shout out. Mr. Craig Zale is piping in with some wisdom, some sage wisdom here for us. Thank you, Craig. Client you attract needs to match your offer in the relationship you are focusing on creating. Yep. Oh, that's so true. If if your offer is scraping the bottom of the barrel with trying to just get a conventional oil change for $16.95, that's the customers you're going to attract. Yeah. And uh, we know Craig doesn't do that. Uh, in fact, I was talking to Bill Adams the other day. He does not ever do any marketing with conventional oil change. It's always about the synthetic. Why? Because that's the level of customer he wants to attract to his shops. And Jimmy, Super you're probably cool. going to get to this, but this new technology, this new AI technology, are you going there? I don't want to cut. You. I'm not, but <laughs> certainly you are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's really exciting. Like, uh, you know, there was a day when they came out with the calculator and all the math guys went bonkers because, you know, they didn't have to use the sliding rule or do the chalkboard anymore. They just punched the buttons in. It changed everything. Well, you know, that's really where technology is with machine learning and being able to help us with data. And, you know, one of the, love, the things I really like about Sanchez is that their CRM uses that AI technology. So if you've got 10,000 people that are your customer at some point in time, um, and as you market through your customers and your CRM, you're going to start seeing insights through that AI generation that you wouldn't be able to kind of grind out by yourself. And that's why when Google puts up those little attributes, it says price, conventional oil change, $16.99, because they know what you're marketing. Um, and so you can do the same thing in your own house with your own proprietary content, your own customers, people who have done business with you. And there's, I, I I just don't want to overdo it, but I just think there's millions in that bucket for your business. That, that to really tie is. what Dan's saying, to get to uh, Craig's comment there, is um, is if you understand the pricing sensitivity that your customers have. So is this customer, does this customer need a certain discount off of a service, right? We got a timing belt and we're going to give 10% off or 5% off. And how does that uh, customer think about that is one of those things that, that one comes from your ideal customer profile and understanding that, 
but being able to look at look at little data points like the pricing sensitivity are things that really come out have uh, been made possible with machine learning and um, and AI and those are the types of things that can help you match up you know hey this is the customer I'm looking for I'm going to offer this offer because this meets the ideal customer profile that I have yeah they're there and the and the data the power of that machine to crunch those numbers out makes it easy for you as a shop owner to, yeah. to kind of like segment that information that data and deploy it in marketing and you can use that in acquisition too like you can start your marketing messaging that says our preferred customers prefer this about our service tell that story and birds of a feather flock together it's really a true thing it does happen and if you start giving examples of what your existing customers love about you because you know you really know yeah your marketing improves your new so, customers are better so so you're saying here we could take a shop and transform it from being always repairing what's broken to becoming the preventive maintenance shop yeah yeah, well, I if you do that. that. I, I think it's about educating them in the long-term value to them. But I the gal that cuts my hair was telling me about they were going to go to Hawaii this year, but they canceled it because they're scared to death about the economy. I told her to stop watching the late night TV. Yeah. I but but I think there is a segment of our economy that really is concerned about things and they're watching every penny and they won't fix it till it's broke. The, I think the smarter person is going to be like, I'm going to maintain my vehicle and things don't break because I take care of it on a regular basis. And you have well, to that's, educate them. Yeah. And that's how you build a, a better relationship with your customers in the shop is, is by bringing them in. If you, you think about when somebody's uh, car breaks down, they uh, that's an unexpected stressor in life. And now you want to, as a shop say, Hey, I'm going to spend the majority of my time working with these people that are dealing with a stress in their life that they don't specifically want to be dealing with today, that um, now when they come into the shop and maybe the, any other little thing, the time it takes, the amount it costs, the fact that the coupon expired, whatever it might be, are gonna be a potential additional complications. And so if this is their only interaction with you or the only time that they're coming in and interacting with you is the times when they're stressed, the relationship's a little uh, off kilter, right? But if you're able to say, hey, come into the shop, we're going to change your oil, we'll get your, make sure you know, all your belts are running, your brakes are good, your tires are rotated, whatever those preventative services are that you can provide today, if you're able to do those and, and create good experiences with those customers in those times when they're not stressed um, and, um, and help them educate them, as Dan said, that these are the things that are going to take stress off your plate, then at that point, you're, you're building a better relationship so when things do break, and they do have those costly time um, time taking stress aspects of repairing their car. Um, you're going to have a better relationship with them. They're going to know your shop. They're going to know that you're going to take care of them, and um, and hopefully it creates an all around longer relationship with that customer. Oh, I love that. I love that. And, and you're right. I mean, it's a grudge purchase for those that are only going to fix it when it breaks they're going to come to you whether you're there or not, right? I mean, whether you're marketing to them or not, it's always that grudge purchase. But if you set your shop up as the preventative answer and you're staying top of mind with that customer, you've got some AI helping you to know when they're ready for that next service. You've got a CRM that tracks the mileage. You know when they're ready for that next service. It, it makes a world of difference world of difference. And, and uh, even a new shop owner can step into a new scenario. And just with the current database, there's a fortune in that follow-up. If they follow up with those customers and build that relationship, they'll get them coming back. And it doesn't cost as much as an ac acquisition of acquiring a brand new customer. Yeah. Uh, I would like to throw in like a relationship with the Institute is really critical in understanding like how to run a better shop too. Like, have you ever like taken your car and got it serviced and you got in and it smelled like fuel or oil? You know, I, I think that's just a process thing where they let the technician drive the car out rather than somebody that hasn't actually been in the grease and the oil and the fuel and just drive it out. So there's 
my car doesn't smell. Uh, yeah. It's hard to miss that smell of gasoline, right? It's oddly pleasant, as we like to <laughs> humor about. Smells uh, like money. Yeah, oddly pleasant. Um, so I, I, I think the Institute's a great place for businesses and shops to really understand like other things that they can do to build that customer relationship. Because I know as a user, I like getting in my truck and not smelling gasoline or oil or seeing grease on the steering wheel. And that's not their fault. I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just saying Dan Vance is weird and he likes to get in his car without that smell. And if there's a good process in place for a shop to say, our customers prefer that. They yeah. love that rosy smell when they get in their cars. We're going to make it so for them. Yeah. Oh, it's I love good, it. Good learning education comes from the Institute. All right. Well, and thank you. Thank you, Dan. I, I appreciate that. And we at the Institute love you for saying that. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and th thank you to everybody else who joins us as well. Yeah. So here's some interesting, and Dan, you're going to geek out on this one. Okay. Craig Zale went on to uh, chat GPT and said, what's, what is important to Craig's car cares clients? Here's the answer of what the AI says. Generative AI is experimental, qualified, very information, da, 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 <clears throat> timely, professional and respectful service. One reviewer said Craig's car care is timely, professional, and respectful business mission to properly service and repair vehicles. Craig's car care's mission is to properly service and repair vehicles through training, empathy, transparency, and integrity. Appointments required. It's recommended that visitors make an appointment in advance of their visit. Wheelchair, wheelchair accessible entrance and parking lot. The entrance and parking lot are wheelchair accessible. Debit cards and contactless payments are accepted. Um, Interesting information there from yeah. AI. Interesting. Yeah. Most of that comes from his Google business listing and his website and reviews. And that AI is crunching all of that data that's already out there. And it's reflecting back. And Craig now has a pretty good idea of what he looks like digitally. Yeah. Yeah. That That's interesting. It, so it goes into not only showing what the reviewers have said it's going into showing what Google has collected the data on Craig's uh, shop. So another question here coming from uh, from our from our audience here, our friends this morning. Yes, uh, Betty is asking about financing. Would you not offer special financing like Snap, Easy Pay, Synchrony, Napa Easy Pay? Are are these programs that you would avoid? Or are these programs that you would suggest we continue to offer to our customers? I don't know from a, a marketing standpoint that it specifically has a, any potential detriment. Um, that's a great question. Um, I would probably stay to keep offering that because in the case of some of your customers that are, they, they may be, the car broke down today. They don't get paid for another week. They can at least get the, uh, you know, they can use Snap Pay or Easy Pay to be able to cover those costs up until then, or kind of drag that out because these are a lot of these repairs that they're, they're costly and they're not expected in people's budgets. And so if you can give them a way to do that, I think that that's probably always going to be, um, be advantageous. And that's really just my opinion. I don't necessarily have, have data to back that up, but I would, um, I don't think that it's, it's got any potential detriment to, to your marketing or your customer profiles. Um, and in some cases, it, it, I can definitely see where it would support and add value to your customers and, and your ICP. Yeah, me personally, I, I say you offer them. I, I You offer them. We as a shop, we didn't buy it. We didn't break it. We didn't drive it. We didn't manufacture it. It's the customer's car and they need it repaired. A additionally, I've got a really good relationship with my bank. And the relationship is such that they agree to not work on cars. And I agree to not be the bank. Yeah. So if you own a shop, that's your agreement. You're not the bank and they don't work on cars. So yeah. definitely I, I, these, anybody that signs up for these programs, it, it's their need. They need this information. They, they need this uh, type of a lifeline. So they know what they're signing up for and play it off in a week. Shazam, you're done. Pay it off in a week. It's not you as a shop owner. It shouldn't be falling on your shoulders to take care of that. 
And just one other thought related to that is, um, I've read this morning, I think it was on, well, I, I'll find the resource if people want to read it, but it's talking about credit scores, our FICO scores are dropping. Uh, so they're they're taking the U.S. economy and they're looking at credit scores and they're watching that movement and they're seeing drops. And one of the biggest reason credit drops is because you overuse it. And so people, there's a lot of people that are kind of feeling economic crush, if you want to call it that. Um, when that car breaks, they got to get it fixed because that's a, an important element of their livelihood. They got to go to work now. They can't sit at home anymore. So they need their vehicles. You want to make sure that you remove as many barriers as you can to get them to do business with you within those guidelines of the kind of shop that we are. And I think the data that's out there supports this idea that those financing options are really, really a, a big value opportunity for you. Because nobody sees those as like long term, like a mortgage or anything. It's just like, yeah, it's a little bit of relief. OK, I can just take care of this with this and I can move things around and things are getting better and da, 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 da. Oh, I, I use it. Uh, it's uh, six months, same as cash. So I my bill is uh, six thousand dollars. I'm a thousand dollars every month. Just like same as cash. Yeah. So have I paid interest to uh, Synchrony? Probably not. Um, I may have once or twice, but no, as a general rule, I'm paying it off within that six month time period because it's just that bridge that I'm using. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I, I like that. Good question. That was a good question. God, night. Nice. Thank you. Who asked that? Oh, that was Betty. Thank you, mm -hmm. Betty. Appreciate that. That was really good. Um, uh, so grudge purchases, uh, fortune in the follow-up retention, retention, mm -hmm. super strong. We know when our customers are wanting to buy, uh, the future of the industry, let's talk about where we're going. Uh, what is the future of marketing to customers? What's it likely to be, uh, on their cars? If their cars break those cost of those services, what is the future of our industry look like? Um, Dan, can let's I, start with you, and then oh, yeah. then cinch we'll, you can uh, cinch that up. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> Whoa, that was good. Yeah, no, I think uh, technology is going to continue to advance. Uh, computing power is going to continue to get smarter. Um, you know, I, I'm a reader. I like to read things. And so um, just as an example, like th this morning, like I read about the FICO scores, and I also read about how um, employers are deploying AI power to help them make sure that their job descriptions are better. And they're also using AI powered uh, technology to help them with like, how happy is my staff? And, you know, doing surveys and analyzing that data. So, you know, if you know the things that make your, your current staff really happy, and you kind of know how to write a job description that brings those two worlds together, you're going to attract new people to your shop that want to work there, are going to love working there, are going to love working for you and your shop. And so I think technology, sometimes we really think about it in these narrow ways, like, you know, marketing, what's the simplest, easy, shortest road to it. But, you know, if I'm, I'm attracting the best type of workers and they're happy, they're treating my customer better, my customers are spending more money and they're telling people, they're telling their neighbor, don't go there, go to this guy. Yeah. Um, you know, it just has this huge effect on us and, and that power, that capacity is growing like crazy. You, you know, you can, you can type in stuff on and, and create a video just by your words. That's unbelievable to me. Like when I was a kid, if you wanted to make a phone call, you went in the house and you dragged the thing with a 30 foot cord on it. Right. And you did the rotary. But those days are gone. We're in a different world and it's going to be different in 10 years. And that's OK. It's going to be great. It is going to be great. Justin. 
Yeah, you know, I, I back up just the, instead of looking at the future and kind of look at where we are today and some of the things that we can do as of right now and how that changes the future. So first off, when it really comes down to as a shop and where you physically are um, located or your geospatial aspects, um, there's a lot of things that really just basically make up a good equation to your business, right? What's the what's the customer base around you? How far are people willing to drive, right? Tells you about what the market size is and how many cars you have the potential to um, to service, how many um, bays you have, how much competition you have. These are all variables in really the equation that says how well are you going to be able to do as a business, right? Um, then once you're able to bring customers in, you're getting those customers in, um, understanding how much it costs to acquire those customers, often called the CAC, um, what their lifetime value is, which is really how, how much are they going to spend over how many months or how many years as a customer. Um, all of these things really come together to build the equation. And, and really, we could have a, a whole nother webinar on top of, of those things today. But being able to understand those inside of that equation helps you understand the um, the functionality and the total value that, that your shop can, can really produce. Um, by having that information and having the additional information that is starting to be added into understanding who the customers are um, and, and what's happening with their vehicles is just more information that gets put into the equation. And when we're really talking about machine learning and artificial intelligence, um, they are really just using really awesome math right, and really great equations. Um, machine learning at its simplest is really just a regression analysis that helps you really say, okay, well, I wanna have an answer within this zone or what is the answer within this zone? Run a whole series of, of, uh, of algebra on top of it and repeat that over and over again until I get to an answer within the zone or whatever, whatever it is that you're specifically set your equation up for. So by being able to take and understand all of those variables that are available, and put them into an equation is going to really help you better understand where you can go as a company, right? And, and those are some of the things that are gonna change. When we start thinking about all the different variables that are included inside of that, that's when, like we talked about with the ICP, right? Uh, the ideal customer profile, um, trying to have anything more than 20 starts to become asinine, right? It's, it's hard for us as a human brain to keep track of that. And then it becomes even harder to keep track of that when we're putting it into a spreadsheets and then look at those along, down the line. When we're trying to identify those variables that are gonna set us apart and be unique or be the variables that are gonna tell us, hey, if we change this variable, it's gonna have this much of a greater impact on our business, right? Those are the types of things that AI can do a really good job at that the human mind can't, is really assessing a, a whole lot of variables to identify which are the most unique or most important variables. Um, and so I think that's gonna be one really important one that's gonna be, uh, be available and, and come in the future with AI. Um, one another really interesting one is gonna be just the ability to understand it with, um, and this is something that we have, um, have on the future at Cinch, we don't have this built, but um, is the idea of using the information on the invoices to understand, hey, we had the Chevy truck, the timing belt broke. We had this uh, four, it, it broke at, you know, 120,000 miles. And then we had this other one that broke at 130,000 miles, right? And by being able to start to identify um, what are the miles at which a certain part of the car is going to be broken and need to be repaired, gives us the ability to start to say, hey, there's an 80% likelihood that a customer at 130,000 miles is going to need to replace the timing belt or a water pump here um, if they don't do it at 100,000 miles, right? And so being able to educate customers on um, using that AI and then being able to educate customers that have those vehicles, um, you know, we, we actually chatted about uh, AutoNet TV earlier, right? Using something like their video content to say, hey, this is, um, this is why you wanna repair your timing belt, right? Those are the types of things that AI is gonna be able to do in helping us to identify and, and better communicate and run a better, more efficient business. I feel like I just ran a huge monologue, but um, I get passionate about this stuff. I see it, see it a lot and think about it a lot, so. Yeah, oh, and I, I love it. I love where we are. I love our industry. I love what we do. 
I love that we help people stay safe on the road so they can go visit family and friends. They can go camping on the weekends. They can have activities. They can create memories. Uh, so we're in the memory business. Didn't think of that one before. I thought we were in the automotive repair business. No, no, no. We're creating memories that families can have these memories. So last and final question, let's, let's round this out here. If, if anybody listening has any final questions for either Justin or Dan, type them in. We'll, we'll contact you and get back together. want to ask this last one. Justin, you've got less than a minute. Dan, you've got less than a minute. The question is, you've got a magic wand now. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to change within the automotive industry? Justin, you first and then Dan. Uh, I would say... I would do everything possible to help everybody collect better information, collect better data. So getting, getting everything, uh, phone number, email, mailing address. Um, and that would be my magic wand. Nice. Better data, data hygiene, even. Yep. Yep. Nice. Beautiful. Dan to you. Oh, without question. I, I think the, the reality is set in the internet is going to be the only place that you're going to attract new customers. They're going to learn more about your shop from your website than any other place. That's it. The best place, the most information, everything about you. So I think shops have to kind of rethink the internet. Like, okay, I'm doing Google ads or I'm doing Google search or I'm working on my website. What else? Because there's a lot of stuff out there from a marketing standpoint that you can add in and not to kind of just get, you know, I'm just only working on low hanging fruit. I want to build my brand. I want to reach people that have never heard of me or thought of me, but are in my service area. I want to, I want to run ads. So whenever you're on the internet, you see my brand. Um, I want, I would love to see, here's my magic wand that we rethink how we utilize all the options in the internet space to really grow and expand our businesses because that's all we got anymore. That's it. That's true. That's true. And uh, to reflect that back on myself, my magic wand would be to that, Dan, uh, the digital footprint, make sure that everyone's digital footprint was as complete as possible so that our customers would be able to see us and, uh, and visit us, visit our shop, have trust in us to be able to take care of them and keep them safe on the road, thus creating more memories with family and friends and people being together because that results. So my, my magic wand is to have better business, a better life and a better industry. Yeah. That's the magic wand that I'm looking I'm for. I'm writing that down. <laughs> All right. Write that I'm down. Better business, better life, better industry. This is yeah. exactly what we're looking for. Uh, as as a community and uh, you guys are awesome thank you so much appreciate you joining today been fun uh, yep thank you yeah the the insight that we get from talking about uh ai the ai that's out there we talk about our, our current customers retaining those customers you know i've got some uh, webinars coming up that we're going to talk about a loyalty rewards program my webinar next week we're going to talk to team taylor about attracting the right asset to your shop, which is your technicians, your employees, your service advisors, how to attract them and then keep track of them. So we're going to attract them and track them as well. So join in uh, next week as we talk to Team Taylor and Silver Lake Auto and Tire Centers. Um, Christina from Silver Lake is going to join and uh, she's using this program. So we're going to have tons of questions to ask her for you as shop owners, for us, as we are building our bench for those people that we can call at a moment's notice to, to step in and fill in, we want to be able to do that. So my super big thanks and shout out today to Cinch. Justin, thank you for being here and uh, providing yeah. insight and depth of knowledge. Uh, same to you, Dan. Thank you for Advanced thank Local. You. Thank you for being here and, and providing thank us you. with knowledge and information that we can help our industry to grow and be better, be awesome. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Thank you. My name is Jimmy Lee. You've got questions. We've got answers. I'm going to let you go first. You go with the questions. We'll come at you with the answers. Top right-hand corner, scan this QR code 
If it's a first time listener with the Institute, this will take you to get a business uh, <laughs> a business assessment. We will, we at the Institute will help to analyze your business to see if you're hitting on all eight cylinders, if they're all firing at the same time to see what areas maybe you need to pay attention to. Love to talk to you about this. My name is Jimmy Lee. This is my cell phone. This is my email address. Give us a call, give us a ring, drop us an email. Let's connect. Thank you very much, guys.